pinagnunubena, pinagdidibusyonan, hinihinga ng tulong, at ipinuprosesyon ang imahe tuwing kapistahan. Alam nyo ba ang kwento ng mga santo at santa sa ating simbahan? Hello, Espinatics! Ignite, the official news portal of St. Polycarp Parish, has just celebrated its 50-year anniversary this June. At bilang handog sa aming anibersaryo, ay hatid namin sa inyo ang anecdotes. Short, amusing, and interesting stories about the life of the saints and other prominent figures of the Catholic Church. Hangad namin na makapagbigay ng karagdagang kaalamang pangreliyon sa buong Catholic community, and especially to the millennials who thirst for the knowledge about the life of the saints and the Catholic faith itself. And for our pilot episode this June, we feature the life story of St. Anthony of Padua. Is there a Catholic who doesn't know him or has not even seen one of his images? He is commonly portrayed as a saint with a child Jesus on one hand and a book of gospel on the other. He is known as the patron saint of miracles, the lost and the stolen articles, and was declared a doctor of the church by Pope Pius XII in 1946. He is St. Anthony of Padua. Today, June 13, we celebrate his feast day. Fernando Martins de Bullion y Taverna was his real name. He was born on August 15, 1195 in Lisbon, Portugal. A legitimate heir to a noble title and lands of Don Martin de Bullion and Doña Teresa Taverna, his parents. They occupied a luxurious palace near the cathedral in Lisbon. His future seemed to be secure and planned, but he chose to live a life of simplicity. Fernando's restless quest for God's call came early. At the age of 15, he gave up his inheritance and entered the Augustinian monastery to seek a life of solitude and devotion to God. Two years later, he decided he would have to move on to find the kind of life he wanted. At the Abbey of Santa Cruz, Coimbra, Portugal, his new home, Anthony devoted the next nine years to studying Augustinian theology and scripture. He was ordained as priest and became a member of the Augustinian order. But everything had changed when the news of the Franciscan martyrs in Morocco reached him and came to witness the return of their remains in 1220. This fueled his eagerness to be part of the said religious order. At his own request, he was sent as a missionary to Morocco, but he became ill. His attempt at missionary work was such a complete failure that the Franciscans ordered him back to Portugal after a few months. The ship taking him back to his country was forced to land in Sicily, North Italy, after a storm, as Anthony recovered his health and he conceived a new plan. He would go to the fourth general chapter meeting of the Franciscans. It was where he met St. Francis of Assisi, who was impressed with his eloquence and his profound knowledge in theology and in the Holy Scripture. St. Francis himself appointed him a teacher of theology. In an ordination in Forli, though unprepared, Anthony delivered an eloquent and moving homily that impressed everyone present. His popularity as a homilist had reached in Italy and in France, 
and so did the miracles he performed among the sinners, the sick, the mothers, the lost things, and even lost spiritual goods. Anthony had a book of psalm that contained notes and comments to help when teaching students. And, in a time when a printing press was not yet invented, he greatly valued it. A novice who had already grown tired of living religious life decided to depart the community. Beside leaving, he also took Antony's Psalter. Upon realizing his Psalter was missing, Antony prayed that it would be found and returned to him. And after his prayer, the thieving novice was moved to return the Psalter to Antony and to return to the order, which accepted him back. He is typically depicted with a book and is commonly referred to today as the finder of the lost articles. Once, when he attempted to preach the true gospel of the Catholic Church to the heretics, who would not listen to him, he went out and preached his message to the fish in the river. The critics saw how the fish began to gather, and they realized they should also listen to what Anthony had to say. A man who contested the real presence of the Eucharist believed and decided to be converted on the spot when he witnessed how a starved mule put its head down to the ground in a posture of adoration before the Eucharist which Antony continued to hold elevated. In Campo San Piero, while Antony was praying far into the night, Jesus appeared to him under the form of a little child. Back in Padua, he preached his last and most famous Lenten sermons. The crowd were so great, around 30,000, that the churches could not hold them. So he went into the piazzas or the open fields. People waited all night to hear him. After his morning mass and sermon, he would hear confessions. This sometimes lasted all day, as did his fastings. The great energy he had expended during the Lent left him exhausted. This caused his body to become weaker and fell seriously ill. On June 13, 1231, he passed away. Upon exhumation, some 336 years after his death, his body was found to be corrupted. Yet, his tongue was totally incorrupt. Saint Bonaventure, who was present as Minister General of the Friars Minor, took the tongue reverently into his hand and exclaimed, O blessed tongue, which has always blessed God and caused others to bless Him, now it appears evident how great were your merits before God. He was canonized by Pope Gregory IX on May 30, 1232. The image most associated with St. Anthony is that of a young friar holding a lily, a book, and a child Jesus. The lily represents his purity. The one which is closest to historical reality is that of the saint with a book in his hand. The book symbolizes doctrines and his preaching, which were always inspired by the Holy Spirit. And the other one is with the child Jesus, which recalls his vision at Campo San Piero. May napulot ka bang mabuting aral buhat sa kwento ng buhay ni St. Anthony? Remember, he was just 15 when he heeded the call of the Lord. Katulad mo, bilang isang kabataan, ay maaari mo ring magamit ang iyong talento sa pagpupuri at paglilingkod sa Diyos. See you on our next video. We at SP Power Media make positive contributions.